Good morning everybody and welcome to TFW Church. Uh, I can't believe it. it is the year 2021 uh, and a real warm welcome to you whether you're tuning in for the first time or the thousandth time. Uh, we're just really glad that you're here. We hope you had a great Christmas and New Year break, whatever that looked like. Uh, and with it being a new year, I hope you're excited about what that is going to bring. I know uh, with it being new year, a lot of us or a lot of people have new year's resolutions. I've seen uh, a lot of people posting on social media or other things saying about um, what they're going to do, what they're not going to do, uh, goodbye 2020, hello 2021. Uh, and I was just really struck uh, by this uh, little few verses in Isaiah 60. And I was just like, wow, imagine if this is our mantra, if this is our uh, saying for 2021. It says this, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. What a fantastic couple of verses. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You see, darkness, uh, darkness is a sign of sleep, isn't it? But light, uh, light is a sign of rising. Light is a sign of going after. And that's what it is. Uh, we've had our Christmas, we've had 2020, but imagine what this year would look like uh, if we arise and shine because we know the light of God is on us, his glory is on us, his favour is upon us. Imagine what 2021 would look like if we go after the world shining for him. So as we hit off this uh, fantastic Sunday morning by looking at the vision, uh, let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you that your light has shined, shone upon us. And because of that, we can shine uh, to the rest of the world. We thank you for a new year. We thank you that each day is a gift from you. And we just pray, Father, this morning, uh, as we go through this service, that we will just connect, you in a, connect with you in a new and fresh way as we head into 2021. Amen.
just a few announcements as we uh, carry on with our service. Firstly, uh, is, do you know anyone who uh, has questions about faith? Maybe even yourself, you, you wonder what it's all about. Uh, we run this course called Alpha, and Alpha is a fantastic course. Um, it's run by Flo, uh, and it involves just watching these videos, chatting and exploring faith in a really friendly, non-judgmental environment, and I would highly recommend it. Maybe you know someone who's been asking questions. Uh, why not send them the link uh, to the Alpha? Uh, it could change their life. So that's going to be launching on, uh, on the 12th of January. Uh, if you email alpha at tfwchurch.com, uh, then uh, Flo will get in touch with you. That would be fantastic. Also, as we head into a new year, uh, why don't you think about uh, small groups? Small groups are the perfect way to connect. If you're feeling a bit isolated at the moment, if you're feeling like uh, you're not really connecting with anyone at church, then small groups are the perfect place to grow in your faith, to connect with like-minded people, uh, and just to go on a journey together. So if you're interested in joining a small group, uh, or you just need to recommit to your small group that you're in at the moment, then why don't you email office? at tfwchurch.com I love you Lord for your mercy never failed me all my days I've been held Good morning, friends. It's Vision Sunday. It's the first Sunday of 2021. And it's a great opportunity for us today to stop and take stock, 
to think about our lives personally, also to think about our community life as a church, and just to ask ourselves some fresh questions about our future. You know, every so often when you go on a journey, you need to stop and, and think about uh, where you're headed. You need to check the map again and check your surroundings. Make sure that you're on track. If you don't do that, you can get distracted. You can, you can lose your way. And that's true for us as individuals. It's also true in the life of a church. And so every so often we like to have a Vision Sunday and talk about where we're heading. And this year we wanted to do that on the first Sunday of the year. And so today might be a little bit different, but I hope that it's encouraging to you. And I hope that you're able to really get a sense today in your heart of what we see as leaders at TFW, not only this year, but over the next three years. Um, I want to read from Matthew chapter 14. There's this account that's very encouraging, even though um, it's a dramatic account. It can encourage us in our journey with Jesus. Jesus has just uh, fed the 5,000. And then in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, it says this, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And so you see this picture. He says to his disciples, listen, I'm going to dismiss the crowds. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to get into the boat it says he made them get into the boat and go before him to the other side. That's where I want you to go. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Isn't that interesting? Uh, Jesus had told the disciples to get in the boat, go ahead of him to the other side. Uh, and you'd think that after he'd gone away to pray, they would have just cruised across the water because that's what Jesus told them to do, that the, the, the sailing would be smooth and sun in their face, everything just great. But no, hours have gone by and they're a long way from land. They're not on the other side yet because the wind and the waves are against them. They're in a storm. Uh, it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Uh, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart. It's I. Do not be afraid. I think that's a great word for you and I, friends, to take into 2021. For Jesus to say to us, take heart. It's, it's I. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out and he said, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshipped him saying truly you are the son of God. It's an incredible uh, account and it's always encouraged me uh, because when Jesus calls us to move forward in our lives there's no guarantee that we won't face opposition. In fact it's almost guaranteed that we will face opposition. We will face testing times. Who'd have known at the start of 2020 what a testing year it would have been? And we don't know what 2021 holds. But what we must never do is just park vision and say, well, we'll just hold on and we'll wait for the storm to pass. You know, when, it, when, when things are better, when the sun is shining and everything's fine, then we'll try and move forward. No, we should go at the command of Jesus. You know, here's one of the things I've learned in my life. I can't control the weather but I can set sail. I can't control the waves and the tide and the direction of the wind, but I can trim my sail. I can steer my you know, rudder. I can move forward, even though the, the winds and the waves are against me, because that's what Jesus calls us to do. And so we're not sitting around at TFW just waiting for this current storm in our world to pass. 
we're asking ourselves, how do we move forward? Our vision for the next three years, which we're going to talk about today in some of the, the detail, is always based around our overall vision. And you know, our overall vision is this, to love, gather, grow, and live. Our vision is to love our community, gather around the good news of Jesus, grow in our faith, and live to make a difference. And we're going to continue to do that uh, day by day, week by week, month by month, this year and in the years ahead. But recently, uh, as a group of elders, we've been on a journey to really look at the next three years and ask ourselves some really important questions. Here's the kind of questions that we've been asking ourselves. What do we see in the years ahead? I wonder when you look at your life, what is it that you see in the years to come? Do you have a vision for the years ahead? Where should we put our energy and our resources as a church? You know, there's many things that we could be doing as a church, but what we want to know as we pray and as we seek God is what we should be doing as a church. Um, how can we make the greatest possible impact for the gospel? That's a great question. I don't know about you, but when I look at the brokenness of our world, I just have this increasing desire, this increasing burden to make the greatest possible impact for the gospel that I can. And I hope you have that same sense in your own heart. I just want to see people's lives changed by the good news of Jesus. And then this question, what does God want our church to look like three years from now? And that's an important question because that leads us to pray, to find out what God's saying. How is he leading us and guiding us? And what does he see for our church? You know, we've always wanted TFW to be a place of hope, uh, a light that shines in the darkness. We've always wanted TFW to be a place where people can come and find life and love and hope and purpose and meaning. It's a place where people can belong before they even believe. We want to be a church that's known for our love. We want to be a church that's known as a place of prayer and a place of worship. We want to be a church that's known for its commitment to the word and to missions. We've got all these things we want to see. And so one of the things we have to do is, is not just look at our church program, but look at our church priorities. How is God calling us to move forward? And so I'm, I want to just share with you this morning briefly four areas and we talked about these in the church annual review back in November. So for some of you, this will be a reminder today. And for others of you, you'll be hearing this perhaps for the first time. Four areas that we feel we want to really focus on in the years to come. So what I'm sharing with you now is not the church program. Um, so if, if you don't hear something or if a certain group or whatever isn't mentioned, that's don't worry about that. We're not talking about the church program. We're talking about our our priorities going forward. So the first one is the area of training and development. Training and development. What we want to do, particularly this year, is assess everything we do. Why do we do the things we do? And who do we do them for? And we're going to encourage every group, every activity that we currently run, to prayerfully reassess their vision. We want our, our team leaders, our teams, our groups to sit down prayerfully and say, how does what we are doing fit the vision of our church? What is God calling us to do? And to really get a fresh excitement, some fresh energy, a fresh passion for the vision going forward. We really want that excitement because, you know, when you're excited, when you're, when you're passionate, when you're encouraged, you're motivated, uh, you can push through storms. An opposition. But when you start to lose that sense of passion and excitement, it gets really, really difficult, doesn't it? You know, I want you to know that if you are part of our church and you serve in a, in, in a team, you are more than just a name on a, on a rota or on a schedule. You are a person that God's brought to be part of our church and you have something to offer. And we want you to feel as though you're excited about being involved in our ministry. One of the things we want to do uh, in, in terms of training and development is to train and release new and emerging leaders. 
you know, leadership needs to happen at every level of our organization. And so we want to make sure that we're we're helping to raise up leaders constantly. And so we need to put energy into that in the next three years. We also want every person to recognize and grow in their spiritual gifts for God's glory. Do you know that every Christian, every person in our church, if you are following Jesus, you have a part to play and you've been given gifts to use. Isn't that incredible? Uh, and we're all different, aren't we? Some people have administrative gifts. Other people have hospitality gifts. Some people have gifts to preach. Some people have gifts in music. Some people have gifts to help. Um, there's all kinds of gifts that uh, God gives his church in order to do the work of ministry. And we want to celebrate every person's gifting. And we want to help people find what they are and use those gifts in the church. The second area that we're going to be focusing, focusing on in the next three years is the area of health. And we're not just talking about physical health, although that's obviously really important, but we want, we're talking about emotional health relational health and spiritual health. We want to be a, a church of people that are constantly growing healthier and healthier in our inner world. Um, we want to lead the church on a journey of better understanding our emotional health. You know, that's an area that has often been neglected uh, by Christians. We, we think that everything's about just spiritual stuff and yet your emotional world your emotional health has huge impact on every other area of your life if you're emotionally healthy your relationships are better if you're emotionally healthy your walk with god is better you have a different outlook on life and so we want to really help people find ways of being emotionally healthy we see a church where everyone is able to process and deal with unhelpful feelings and beliefs and assumptions so that they can enjoy better mental health and relational joy. We're going to carry on with our TFW Equip program. Now, we don't know what that's going to look like in 2021 because of the various restrictions we're, we're operating under, but we really want to continue to develop courses that help people and classes that help people. And we might start to develop things like marriage courses, financial management courses, uh, uh, parenting courses, all kinds of stuff that will help people in our church and in our community uh, grow in that area. And we also want every member of our church to develop what we're calling habits for a lifetime. Habits for a lifetime. If we're going to have that kind of spiritual health, mental health, emotional health, we've got to take responsibility individually for our own health, for our own growth. And we want to see every person in our church develop those habits that last a lifetime. Habits like daily prayer, habits like Bible study and reading, uh, habits like fellowship, habits that will help you walk with Jesus day by day. The third area that we're going to focus on in the next three years uh, comes under the heading of outreach. TFW has always been a, a church. It, when you look at the history of this year, we're, we're going to be uh, 42 years old as a church. Uh, it's always had uh, a focus on outreach, reaching out with the good news of Jesus to other people. And we do that in all kinds of uh, ways, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's through activities and groups, or even whether it's supporting missionaries in other nations in the world. We have an outreach focus. You know, in an ever-changing world, the message of Jesus Christ never changes. But the methods that we use to, to communicate the message, they always develop and change through the years. Um, this year, this last 12 months with COVID-19, we've seen how important it is to be able to adjust our methods quickly. Um, and who knows how that's going to uh, happen, continue in the year that lies ahead. So we have to be flexible uh, and we have to embrace new ways of reaching out to people. 
but we're going to continue in the next few years to support and develop our existing outreaches. Uh, things like Alpha, that's a big uh, outreach for us. The survey team, which started uh, in the last year or two, really important for us. Um, community groups such as Golden Memories, Tag. We've seen uh, lots of these things be really effective over the years. Events that we can put on. But we also want to develop new initiatives, new ways of reaching out uh, so that we maximize our outreach to other people. We're going to continue to partner with other Macclesfield organizations like the Hope Center and Silk Life Food Bank and Hope in Northeast Cheshire. And we're also going to look at establishing some perhaps new uh, events uh, in, the, in the months and years ahead so that we can find ways of constantly sharing the good news of Jesus with others. Finally, when it comes to outreach, you know the best outreach, the most effective outreach of all is when someone who has had an encounter with Jesus Christ shares that with somebody else. In other words, when you learn to give your testimony when you can say to somebody else, here's the difference that Jesus made in my life, that is overwhelmingly, all the data suggests, it's the most effective form of outreach. And I just wonder, going into 2021, is there some way that you could up your game a little bit in being a witness for Christ? I know I'm personally challenged, encouraged to do that. I want to just share my faith one-on-one -on -one with more people in 2021 than I did last year. And I think if we can all do that, you know, we've got this little saying at TFW, each one reach one. If every person who calls TFW their home reached one other person with a message of the gospel this year, that would be a massive uh, impact for Jesus. The fourth area that as elders we've been talking about is what we call community or church family. Um, you know, we've seen how important it is in this last year to belong, not just to believe, but to, to belong. And I think one of the things that I've heard over and over again from people that they've missed the most is fellowship. You know, it's good to be able to do sermons online and, and some worship online, but actually being together and having fellowship, hugging each other, praying for each other, sharing a cup of coffee and a, a story and a joke with each other, worshiping together. These things are so, so valuable. Be, being a, a part of a church family, I believe in the years to come, it's going to be even more important that you are plugged into a local church. And if it's ours, that's great. And if TFW is not your home church, that's fine. But wherever God's put you, plug into that church. Um, for us, small groups are really, really important. And we're working behind the scenes right now really hard on trying to develop our small groups. We believe that they are a really important part of our church going forward. And we know we've got a lot of work to do there. It's not been easy enough for people to get into a small group. And we've struggled, to be honest, to raise up small group hosts, people that will host and lead a group. And so we've got work to do to develop that. But we see that as vital uh, in, the, in the coming uh, months and years. Pastoral care is another highly important area. Again, we've seen that this year. And one of the things we just want to say as elders uh, at TFW is a big thank you to those of you who behind the scenes, without any fuss, without any need for recognition, you do an awful lot of pastoral care. Phoning up people, sending them little messages, knocking on their door, checking that they're okay. Again, TFW has always had a reputation over the decades of being a church that loves its people and looks after one another. And we're going to continue to do that uh, in the next few years. And we've got more work to do to learn how to do that. We want to see every age group make sure that they are involved in pastoral care. And that leads me to my final point under church family, and that is that we want to see every age engaged. You know, I haven't focused too much in this presentation on any particular activity or any particular age group, because every age group matters. And as a church family, 
We want to see our little children looked after and coached in the things of Jesus. We want to see our teenagers engaged and our young adults, our, our marrieds, our empty nesters, our singles, those of you that are older. Every age group we want to see engaged in the mission and cause of Christ. And so that's a real important area for us. We want to see everybody thrive at every level, every season of their life. And we believe we can do that, especially as we love each other, encourage each other, and pray for each other. You know, um, through all of this, what we have to do is stay open to the Spirit's leading. The reason the disciples got into the boat to go to the other side is because that's what Jesus told them to do. And we can talk about vision and we can write it out on pieces of paper and we can make these uh, uh, priorities and areas we want to look at. And that all of that is really important. It's very, very important. But we have to do it prayerfully. And in all of that, we have to stay open to the way that the Lord would lead and guide us. There might be things that come up in six months' time that we hadn't seen. And suddenly as a church, we feel the Spirit of God call, call us to pivot and move towards something. There will be things that uh, in two years' time we'll say, man, we never thought that would happen, but we've got to be open. So, so vital that we, we're a prayerful church. And you might say, why is prayer not in one of those four categories? It's because prayer underpins everything. Prayer will always be a priority at TFW, and for every Christian, it should be a priority so that we stay open to the Spirit's leading. You know, it would have been easy for the disciples to, to come up with their own plan. You know, we've just fed the 5,000, what should we do? Oh, we'll camp down and get some food and go to sleep. But Jesus had another uh, mission for them. He had another priority for them. And it's because he told them, you get in the boat and go to the other side. I'm going to go pray. I'll join you later. Uh, that's how they knew what to do. So what can you and I do in our own lives um, going forward at the start of 2021? I want to encourage you to carve out some time this next week to seek the Lord and to put him first at the start of this year. Now, you might have already done that over this new year period, spent time seeking God and reflecting and praying. But if you haven't, this, this week, would you carve out some time? And spend a bit of time reflecting on where you are at in life. You know, when you, whenever you get a, a map out and you're on a journey, the first thing you have to figure out is where you are. And it's only when you figure out where you are and then you can see where you're heading that you can plan, plot a course to get there. I wonder if you've spent any time reflecting lately on where you are in life, where you are in your walk with Jesus, where you are in your relationships, where you are in your own personal priorities. Because it's not just the elders of the church who have to sit down and say, where are we heading in the next three years? Every member of our church, every Christian should regularly sit down and say, Lord, where are we headed? Where are you leading and guiding me? How are you leading and guiding me? What should my priorities be in this next 12 months? You know, it's been a, a tough 12 months, hasn't it, to see what we, we call COVID victims. Even just this last uh, week, I heard about uh, a f some friends of mine, their dad passed away uh, from, from COVID-19. And we've seen COVID victims. Um, and it's, it's, there's, of course, the health victims and those who have sadly passed away. But then there's other victims of the COVID pandemic, financial victims, you know, businesses that have gone out of a business and people who've lost their livelihoods. Those are a kind of COVID victim. But I want to say this to you today. Don't let your faith become a COVID victim. Don't let your walk with Jesus become a COVID victim in 2021. Don't let your engagement with TFW Church become a COVID victim. Um, I want to encourage you to, to make a fresh commitment at the start of 2021 to put God first. Jesus said it this way in his Sermon on the Mount. Seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you don't focus so much on the things of life but seek god and his righteousness first and he'll take care of all those other things you know don't turn around in six months time and say you know i used to pray more i used to read the bible man i used to be engaged with tfw church i used to be involved there don't don't be a used to be kind of christian but make a decision that you're going to be a uh, engaged kind of Christian, someone who walks with the Lord. And if you're not a Christian and you're just tuning into this message today, that's amazing. That's wonderful. But I wonder, maybe this is your year to put God first in your life and to say, man, there, there are, there's more to this uh, life than meets the eye. There are more important things for me to give myself to than the same old things I've been giving myself to year after year after year. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will take care of all those other things in our lives. I want to encourage you in 2021 to start a fresh daily habit of seeking God. And if you've got a devotional life that's strong and robust, keep going. But if you haven't, I want to encourage you to Every day, find some time, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, to pick up the Bible, read a few verses, read half a chapter a day, and reflect on what you've read. Start in the Gospels and, and say, Lord, how does what I've read apply to me? And then pray. Bring God into your day. Bring him into your relationships. Bring him into your career. Bring him into your needs. Pray for yourself, but pray for your, the world and pray for others as well. And then I want to encourage you to establish a fresh Sunday morning routine. You know what Christians have done for over 2,000 years? On the first day of the week, Christians have put God first. That's what they've done. On the first day of the week, the Christians have gathered together to worship and celebrate the good news of Jesus. Don't let that become a COVID victim in your life. We're, we're obviously doing live services um, under the current restrictions, but we have an online gathering. And you know, the danger is this, is that you say, oh, well, I won't, I won't watch the online gathering. I'll, I'll just take the dog for a walk or I'll just go and play golf. I'll catch up on Tuesday. And then Monday comes, Tuesday comes and you're busy and you get to Thursday. And before you know it, you haven't really engaged with online church. Another week's gone by and you started to just drift away. Don't let that happen this year. Why don't you start a fresh Sunday morning routine? Get up, get dressed, get engaged, get your Bible, get your notepad, uh, be open to the Lord, lean in and say, God, I'm going to seek you first on the first day of each week in 2021. When you and I put God first, who knows how he's going to lead and guide us in the coming year. There will be winds that blow. There will be waves. There will be storms. But we can plot our course knowing that he will be with us, that we can live by faith and see great things happen. I believe that in 2021, we're going to see fruit for our labors. We're going to see souls saved. We're going to see lives changed. We're going to see people released into their, into their ministries. And we're, together we're going to achieve great things in 2021. At some point, by God's grace, this year, we will be back in our building. And that will be an amazing thing. I believe this pandemic will be over at some point. And uh, we'll be able to get back together, uh, meeting together again, and hugging each other and worshipping together. But in the meantime... Let's not go back. Let's go forward. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the time we could spend together uh, in this online service today. And I pray, God, that something that I've shared today will just encourage and inspire those that have listened. And I pray that together we would move into 2021 with expectancy, with courage, with faith. Lord, that at the start of this year, we would get rid of any baggage that's holding us down, that we would forgive anybody we need to forgive, that we would deal with any uh, weights and sins that are tangling us up and just 
cast those things off at the start of this year so that we can run with fresh endurance the race that is set before us. I pray for anyone tuning into this message today who today they want to say, Jesus, I, I open up my life to you. I want to become a Christian. I want to know you, Jesus, in a real way that even now in this moment of prayer, as they open up their heart to you, you would come in by the Holy Spirit and do your work of grace. And may all of us move forward together and see great things happen in 2021 and beyond. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, friends. Thanks for tuning in today, as always. And stay in touch. As always, you can always reach out to us. Send us an email. Uh, we'd love to, love to hear from you. If you're struggling, don't struggle alone. Reach out and we'll make sure that we're praying for you and encouraging you as much as we can. And uh, God bless you. And uh, we start a brand new series next week. So tune in next week and we'll see you then.